Remain seated, we're going to sing at Calvary. <laughs> Oh, I'm there so wet. 
Brother Alan Hutchins. I'm sorry it happened. I wouldn't have had it happen. And you don't care what happened. You know, it, we're here and it still happened, but, but that's okay. Uh, we'll not be defeated one way or another. Uh, I bought my Dr. Pepper bottle. It's not Dr. Pepper, it's sweet tea. I'm a southern boy. Uh, I've just got to be uh, moist. Got to keep my voice moist. And the CDs are just falling everywhere. And of course, I did get into the line when the lane closed. You don't care about this either. I had my See display in the trunk. Of course, when you get into the lane, I pulled in, of course, into a corner of an 18-wheeler. I had to hit the brakes hard, so I imagine my CDs were all over the trunk. So we'll see it afterward. But uh, I brought each one of each of them in, so you can see those anyway, until I get them straightened out. But I, I have really been looking forward to this. You wouldn't think so, uh, the way the way I've come in late, you think I've mistreated you, and I really did not. 
intend to to know that this is the pastor's spiritual birthday and to be asked to be here for that that is special very special and uh, David Keaton sends a greeting to you he wished he could be more than one place at a time he said there's none better than Brother L.C. so he thinks very highly as I do too one that I usually sing when I'm here according to the scriptures Christ will come someday he'll come There's a place on Peter Creek Parkway across from Aldi of all places called Barbell Memorial Gardens. Check it this way. And my mother and my dad, they were planted there. Planted mother there in 1974. Full of cancer. Full of cancer. And I'd love to be standing there. Having not died. Just be standing. If I can't be preaching, I'd love to be standing there when the shout comes. Amen. Because she'll get up. That's right. Daddy will get up. And I can't. And that's, that old song is not just a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, hyperbole, a lot of sentiment that says I can shake hands with mother again. That's true. That's true if I'm standing there. Because they will stand up first and then I'll be changed. That's right. And we could go up together. Amen. And then wherever the Lord Jesus goes, 
We'll be like little puppy dogs. He won't be able to get away from us then. I'll be like Mary Magdalene was in the garden. He'll have to say, let go of me. Stop holding on to me. I've got to go away. I, I can't stay here. Let go of me. Well, I, I, I'm going to preach to you a little bit, a little bit later. But here's another one that uh, Brother Jesse Lee Boyd wrote. And uh, maybe, maybe Donna's not worn this one out yet. But she sings it better than I do. And uh, she probably puts more feeling in it than I ever will. But this one, I was listening to it as I recorded it. Listen to it this afternoon as I recorded it. Way back in 1975, I recorded this song. Heaven will be such a wonderful place when we see Jesus and stand face to face.
really messed up those words. So you, you'll have to just listen to them again. I've never knelt at the wailing wall. I've never visited an old pilot's hall where he tried to wash his hands, but he couldn't. I've never walked down that blood bought trail. No, I've never drunk from old Jacob's well. I've never seen where Mary gave birth to God's greatest gift to this earth. I've never prayed in Gethsemane, but I've been to Calvary. I've gone to Calvary through the Word by things that I've read and things that I've heard. I've never seen heaven, but I've been told that the streets there are pure as gold. The walls are of jasper, but glittering bright. There is no sunshine, there is all night. Then the God's preparing a place for me because of Calvary. one that Brother Jesse wrote too. You remember that one, don't you? Yeah, he sang that with the Victory Trio. I never sang that with him. I didn't help him write that one or anything. But there was a song, and I go over to Pretty Manor. Are you, you all familiar with Pretty Manor in King over next to West, West High School there in King? I go over there uh, every first, third, and fifth Monday, which means I go tomorrow morning. And uh, they they love for us to do just a little talk with Jesus. And most of them, almost all of them are ladies over there. So you know, when I'm over there playing, they want me to do the bass, and they do all the rest of it. So I'm playing, and I'm doing bass, and that does not happen. Well, there was a song. I don't have that one up here. I need to put that one up here. There was a song before Brother Jesse, Donna's dad, and I went down to record Heaven, a Wonderful Place there in 1975. Jesse had written another song, and he wanted to submit it for publication. Now, it wasn't to go on my album because it was a, it was a quartet song. It had a bass lead in it. But he wanted to get it copyrighted. So, in my bedroom, where my piano was, my mom and my dad and uh, uh, Jesse, and this had to be before my mom passed away in 74, so I don't remember exactly when they recorded it. But anyway, the four of us recorded that thing, and Jesse sang the bass on it. So, I, I'm telling you all this to say, I don't know whether you want me just to sing one part of it or whether you want me to be a one-hand quartet. So you just tell me, do you want to imagine the parts or do you want me to jump around on the parts? Just do it. Well, we'll just, I'll just jump around and make a fool of myself and then next time through, you, you pick a part and you sing it with me. Shake your head this way. Shake your head this way. Jesse loved to write about heaven. And this one's about heaven when I get to heaven. And they they wrote it. They sent us a lead sheet back and they wrote it in F, so I'll sing it in F. I'm going to walk with Jesus. I'm going to talk off with Jesus when life on earth for me has ended. I'm going to thank him that he loved me. I'm for dying on Calvary. When he gets to heaven. Shout, shout, hallelujah. Sing his praises when I'm 
when I look on before me. I'm gonna sit down by my loved ones there beside the river of life. When I get to heaven, when I get to heaven, I walk the streets of purest gold. I'll live forever and not grow old. And he insisted that we slow it down here. Sorrow will then be past. I Let go and let God is a chesed 
term. I know that. It's a passive term. And that suits me fine. I'm, I'm familiar at home with the Christian Missionary Alliance and the Keswick Movement. And I've worked in their churches and I, and I love the Deeper Life Ministry. And Woodland used to use Let Go and Let God Have His Wonderful Way as theme song for our Sunday night service over the radio. Let Go and Let God Have His Wonderful Way. And so I'm comfortable with this Let Go and Let God and we need to let go and let God. Amen. Uh, I don't mean to be a shaker or a quaker, but I, I tend to want to say, y'all just kind of do this a little bit. Don't be so stiff. <laughs> let go and let God. Have his way, not your way, not my way, not anybody's way, but his way. Amen. Amen. Sure. And his way will be this way. That's right. That's yeah. Good. It won't be it won't get out of this book right here. It won't, get, it won't get out of the line of this book right here. Let it be according to this book. Really wish the pastor would come up here and let me sing it with him. Because I've been singing this thing, play it, play it, play it, and sing it, sing it. Play it, play it over and over. I thought I'd get around that, run out of the house, play it over and over. And I'm, I'm not sure that I'm ready to start. Pastor, give me the first line. Sing me the first line. I was burdened down with trouble. I was burdened down with trouble. My life was with despair. Desperation and anguish filled my thoughts. Then I read in God's Word, Bring your burdens to the Lord. I only needed to let go and let God. Let go of all my worries. Let go of all my fears. Let go of all those failures. Over all At his feet, lay them down. I only needed to let go and let God. If your life is filled with trouble and you're tempted to despair, yet you're seeking underneath a load of care.
Well, I want to get into the Word with you in just a minute, but I want to sing one more little song with you, if I can recall these words. And it's a song that I sang with my mother, and you may know it, and it may be difficult for me to sing, and you'll say, well, you'll get emotional because you sang it with your mother. No, really not. Uh, we sang it on this one. Um, titled it that, actually. Brother George Myers, if any of you knew him, I know Donna did. George was Joe Myers' uncle, and he was a lay preacher. He was the music director at Woodland for many years. In fact, he established Southern Gospel Music in Woodland as a standard. But he was a lay preacher, and he used to make tapes and specifically for lost people. That was his ministry. And he'd ask me and ask me and my mom and ask other people to record some music on them. And then he'd preach a message afterward, and then he'd pass them along to lost people or to people who need encouragement. This is one of those songs that we put on one of those tapes. And you may know it. If you do, you sing along with it. You may have heard it years ago. I'll talk about this in just a minute. to be. 
sister back there shout so I don't know when to quit. <laughs> but I, I could park here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and not using the verses that you may think I'm going to use which are so familiar in uh, 517 but before 517. Chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians and verse 14. I, while you're looking, I'll, I'll read verse 13. I like that too. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. If Paul can say that, I guess I can say it. Amen. Some of you say you, you, you get beside yourself every now and then. Yeah, I, I do. Probably not as nicely as Paul did, but sometimes I get beside myself. And sometimes I'm, I'm guilty of that. And I like to be guilty of that. But I won't tell you the background of, of 2 Corinthians and why it had to be written. I'll let your pastor do that. But verse 14, I love verse 14. That's not what I'm talking to you about, but I, I have to pass by it, so I'll wave at it. Love what Brother Jack Taylor said about it. Verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Let me ask you one question. Why don't you quit? Why don't you quit? Why don't you quit? Why don't you just quit? I'll tell you why don't you just quit. If you're a believer, you don't quit because you can't quit. Amen. As much as you'd like to quit, you can't quit. And Brother Bill Stafford used to say, be glad when God brings you to the place where you're ready to quit. So that when you quit, you find that you can't quit because he keeps going on in you. Because this verse says, the love of Christ leaves us no choice. Amen. See, what does that mean? Well, we Baptists love the word choice, don't we? Uh, say, oh, it's, he's scaring you now talking about choice. What did Jesus say about that? He said to his disciples, you've not chosen me, I've chosen you. And I believe that's a little bit more far-reaching than just to his disciples. Yeah, that's right. You can disagree with me if you want to, and the pastor can, can correct me after I'm gone if he wants to. But I like what Brother Zeno Gross said about it. He said, if all you did when you came to Christ was make a decision, you're still undecided. Amen. 
I'm glad that Jesus decided on me. If all I did was decide on him, I'd still be miserable. I'm glad he chose me. And I can't get away from him. For the love of Christ leaves me no choice. It constrains me. Brother Tom Hayes wrote a song just about this. I'm constrained by his love. And he asked in that song, you asked me why I keep going. He said, I'm constrained by his love. I'm constrained by his love. Well, that's not, that's not my five-minute message. I'm going to preach four minutes already. The love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge if one died for all, that is, in behalf of all, then we're all dead. And that he died for, that is, in behalf of all, uh, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. You're not your own. Hey, you're not your own. Remember, you're not your own. I have no right to live unto myself. Amen, brother. And I'm not even to live to you. I'm to live Amen. to him. That's right. He bought me. You didn't buy me. That's right. Amen. You said, well, I, I had one elder, I had, a, I had a church I had deacons and elders that I had for that, and one of them said in a business meeting, I was preaching too long, they wanted me to shorten my messages, and they discussed it around it as though I were not in there. And the head elder said, well now the denomination says that we can't say anything to our pastors about how long or short they preach, whether they preach five minutes or 50 minutes. We cannot say anything to them about how long or short they preach. And he said, and I was sitting right beside him, the, this, this deacon said, well, I pay his salary, I guess I can't do it. <laughs> and they had women on that, on that board too. And one woman said, look at me, she said, she just looked right straight at me and said, you're good, but you're not that. <laughs> so you know what I did? I didn't crawl and I didn't pitch a fit. I didn't argue my case. I, and I, I didn't put that elder, that head elder on the spot. I, I just, I bought me an egg timer. I didn't mean to tell you this. I bought me an egg timer. And I would see what time it was when I finally got into the pulpit to preach. And I would look at the clock and I knew what time they wanted to get out. And I'd set that egg timer to about four minutes to give me time to close. And whatever time that dinged, I'd stop preaching. And then have to sit there and listen to that thing. <laughs> All the time I was preaching. One of the former pastors came in for a service, a special service we had. And he saw that egg timer on the pulpit. He said, what in the world is that thing? I didn't tell you. Amen. And it stayed there as long as I was passionate. Now, why did I say you can say that? Anyway. The love, the love of Christ constrains us. And we, we go on because he goes on in us. But what I want to get to, I'm not even getting to. Verse, what I want to get to is this. I better read the end of verse 15. Not henceforth up living to themselves, but unto him that died for them and rose again. I'm glad he got up again. That's what makes it all important. But look at verse 16 and I'll be quiet. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Now, Paul knew a lot. When he was Saul, he knew a lot. I mean, he was a good student. And, and he thought in the flesh he knew a lot, and he did. And he even thought he knew a lot about Jesus of Nazareth. He thought he knew a lot, a lot about this new Christian faith. But when he, when he was knocked off his camel on the road to Damascus, when the high sheriff of heaven turned his blue light on, and it blinded Paul and knocked him off, and he came up saying, Lord, what will I have me to do? You, you're, you're with me, aren't you? You know where I am in Acts 9. Oh, he, he said, I didn't know him after the flesh anymore. I thought I knew there all there was 
supposed to know about him in the flesh, but henceforth though we don't know him after the flesh. We don't know any man after the flesh. We're looking spiritually now. Yea, though we've known Christ after the flesh, we don't know him henceforth after the flesh any longer. We know after the spirit. Now there's a whole lot of people, and I'm going to be quiet. There's a whole lot of people and a whole lot of independent fundamental Baptist churches that know a whole lot about Jesus in the flesh and they think that's all there is to know. And they quote, they quote, they quote, they quote the creed, they quote the text, they quote all the facts, they quote everything. But they know about him after the flesh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But you let the high sheriff of heaven get behind them with his blue light and blind them like he blinded Paul and knocked them off the road and make them come up and say, oh Lord, what will I have to do? They'll forget everything they know. Make them dummies? Oh, they'll come up knowing him in a way they never knew him before and it makes all the difference in the world. We don't know him after the flesh anymore. Oh, Christmas is coming and we're going to talk about all the flesh things that we know about. You know, I'm glad all that's true and I'm glad he was virgin born and he had to be. But what matters is I have seen him. Follow me now. I have seen him with eyes beyond these eyes. And I don't know him anymore after the flesh I know him after the spirit, and that makes all the difference. Amen. Amen. And though I know those things, those facts to be true and necessary, when I quote those facts, they mean something altogether different to me now because I don't know him just after the flesh anymore. I know him after the spirit. And he's alive to me. Yes. And I'm alive to him. Henceforth, though we know man after the flesh, when we get together, I don't know Ron after the flesh. I know him after the spirit. That's why I don't have to know about you, except that you know my Lord. Well, maybe five minutes went to 10, and I'm a liar. The pastor won't ask me back for another year or two. But I want you to know that in Christ, we know things about each other. Do I look like Catherine Coolman? We know things about each other. Don't we? And we're glad we do. Because we know things after the Spirit and not just after the flesh. And I'm ready to take a run around this place. Are you? I'm glad that we know each other after the Spirit. Amen, brother. And we know Him after the Spirit. And I ain't as scared of no spooks. Come Tuesday night, I'm glad I know the Holy Ghost. There you go. Yes. And I know him well. And he's welcome at my house. Amen. And he's going to keep the other spooks away from my house. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I know him, not after the flesh. I know him after the spirit and he knows me. That's right. Well, let's sing a song about it. Call me out a song and let's sing a chorus about it. You want Amazing Grace? Amazing Grace, all right. Then I'm going to add a chorus to that that the Spirit man we used to add to it. Can you sing that verse that says, "Twas grace that taught my heart, you see it's Halloween, to fear. We don't like that anymore, do we? I'm glad for the grace that taught my heart to fear. Amen. Boy, I'm glad that the grace taught me to fear. And then that same grace relieved my fears. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And that same grace by fear. I 
just began to live. When God's amazing grace came in, I just began to live. All things have passed away. I have a brighter day. My name's recorded up above. I just began to live. Now you look like you never heard that before. How many of you never heard that before? You need to learn that. You need to learn that. I just began to live. I just began to live. When God's amazing grace came in, I just began to live. All things have passed away. I have a brighter day. My name's recorded up above. I just began to live. One more time, and somebody will smile. Can you stand while we sing? Stand while we sing. Some of you are about to sleep. I just began to live. I just began to live. When God's amazing grace came in, I just began to live. All things have passed away. I have a brighter day. My name's recorded up above. I just began to live. And Pastor, I hope we didn't overstay our welcome. Amen. Thank you for letting us come. Amen, brother. Well, we're going to receive a love offering. Could you just get one more song? All of you be seated. Ron, you and Jimmy come, and we'll receive a love offering for Brother Allen. We appreciate you coming tonight, and what a blessing this has been. We appreciate the Word of God that was shared in song and also from the Bible. Thank you, Brother Allen. You don't by any chance know, uh, remember joy comes to the Lord. Sure. Okay, that would be a great one. All right. Let's go ahead and pray for this offering, Ron, if you don't mind, please. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we do come this evening thankful for all that you do for us. Lord, we're thankful for our brothers that bring forth the praise and honor and glory to you. Lord, may we also live for you. And may you be happy in all that we are. And Lord, we pray that you bless this church and help us to grow. Help people to come in that would want to know the truth and, as the brother said, know you in the spirit, not in the flesh. And Lord, we look to you now for all that's done. We pray that you bless this offering, Lord, to, that you help him to continue uh, on his way and, Lord, uh, keep his ministry going and, and everything that needs to be done. You know more than we do. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe right now you're kneeling beside the rubble of an aching and broken heart. When the things you gave your life to have fallen apart, you're not the first to be acquainted with sorrow. But our master promised sunshine after the rain. Hold on, my child, if joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for the night. Hold Trust in God and in mountains you can't move. 